to my Country Craft Corner. How in the world are you guys doing today? It is so good to see you again and thank you so, so much for stopping back by to see what I'm up to. And what I'm up to today is I'm going to be making my double decker fudge. Oh my goodness, this fudge tastes just like a Reese's cup when it's finished. I am not even kidding you, only better only better if that's possible to taste better than a Reese cup because Reese cups are some of my favorite things. <laughs> anyway, this recipe was given to me by a sweet lady named Kathy years and years ago when we were band moms together. Hi, Kathy, if you're watching. <laughs> so I wanted to give her credit for this recipe. I had seen this for years and years and other people had made it and I never could get a recipe from any of them. They never wanted to give up their recipe. <laughs> so Kathy was so sweet and ended up giving me the recipe. So I've been using this recipe for over a decade now. So we are going to get started pretty quick, but I wanted to show you this beautiful scarf. Our lovely Julie Monroe sent this to me for Christmas. Thank you so much, Julie. I love it. And I, you know, I love red. Absolutely love red. And it pairs nicely with my little, my little kimono jacket here today. So we're all festive for Christmas. <laughs> so thank you, Julie. Thank you so much. It arrived yesterday evening late. Our mail is coming at all hours of the night, day, night, <sighs> craziness, I'm telling you. Anyway, let's get started. Let's get started. So first thing I want to do is go through the ingredients with you. Let me turn the camera around here. Okay, here you can see, here's the recipe here, and you can see that it's very long, and I will type it out and put it in the description. This recipe is not for the faint of heart, you guys. This recipe is nothing like my other recipe for peanut butter fudge. This one is more intense and labor intensive, and I highly recommend that you have somebody available to help you when it comes to the stirring, and you'll see why and what I mean by that in just a little while. But the ingredients are a two, two cups or a 12-ounce package of Reese's peanut butter chips. You're going to need Hershey cocoa. Going to need marshmallow fluff. This is a seven and a half ounce container. I need one can or a cup and a half. I use the whole can of evaporated milk. Evaporated, not condensed. Evaporated milk, sugar, butter, and vanilla, pure vanilla. Okay. Yes, all of those ingredients go in this fudge. Okay, the first thing we do is we need to uh, line a 13 by nine inch pan, right here we go, with a piece of heavy duty, I use heavy duty aluminum foil. And then what I'm gonna do, this is the same trick I did uh, with my other fudge, is I just butter the bottom of this. And that way, when we're done, we can just loosen the edges and pull the entire fudge out. Okay, so let me get some butter and we're gonna butter the bottom of this pan. I'm just gonna use some out of my butter dish. This doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to, you know, cover the bottom. So that the, the aluminum foil doesn't stick to the fudge. When you go to cut it. I'm just using a plastic knife kind of to rub it around the bottom. So the next thing we do, we're going to work with these two bowls here. Okay, so we're going to take, we're going to go through the directions, place one cup of peanut butter chips in medium bowl and set aside. So let me find my one cup. Cut these open. One cup. There we go, one cup and set aside. Okay. So next up, we need to work on this bowl. Uh, in second medium bowl, stir together cocoa, melted butter, and vanilla until mixture is smooth. So we back up here and we go, one. I need a quarter cup of butter melted. 
So here's the stick of butter. One stick of butter is half of a cup. So I need half of this stick of butter. And the other half is gonna be used in the pan over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in this pot that I have sitting over here on my stove. And I'm gonna put this in the microwave. And I'm gonna melt it in that cup because that is not gonna work. I'll be right back. Butter melted. Okay, so we need a quarter cup of butter melted and we need one half cup of cocoa. So I'm a half cup, there we go. Brand new cocoa. Oh my, this is usually easier to open. Okay, half of a cup. Perfect. And then a quarter, and then we bring this butter over here. Chris is still over there. And we're gonna pour the butter on this, and then we're gonna pour these on top of this mixture. And they're gonna melt a little bit. Holmes the hand. <laughs> Thank you, honey. And what we do is just add this butter to this cocoa. We just wanna stir it around a little bit, sorry. Until that's all combined. What we do is then add a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then we pour the rest of our morsels on top. And we just let that sit, just like that. And we'll use that later. Okay. So now we're gonna move over to this pot, okay? I'm going to go ahead and turn on my middle burner here. Turn it to about medium high right now. And I already have the quarter cup of butter in there. And I need to add four and a half cups of sugar. So here we go with my big old cup here. One, two, three, four. There's just a little bit of sugar in this fudge. And Use my half a cup for my banana. This is all going to be together anyway. And a half. Okay, and we add to that our can of evaporated milk. Again, that's evaporated milk, not condensed. And we stir that up a little bit. Okay, and then we need our seven and a half ounce container of marshmallow fluff. And I 
I just put my spatula in and I just go around the edges over and over and over again until it comes on out of there. Just give me a bowl full of this. I'd be fine. <laughs> That's terrible. Okay, got it all. Empty. All right, now I'm gonna bring this to a boil. And then once it comes to a boil, you need to let this boil for five minutes. And that is gonna to help to incorporate all of this marshmallow fluff and butter and sugar and goodness. But we need to bring it to a boil and it needs to boil for five solid minutes. And you do need to keep stirring it pretty constantly once it comes to a boil. Then what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna tell you, we're gonna take half of this mixture and we're gonna pour it over one of the, over the ingredients in one of the bowls and we're gonna take the rest of the mixture and pour it over the other, the ingredients in the other bowl. And we're gonna mix them. Chris and I are gonna mix them together and then Chris is like, all right, he's waiting. And then the peanut butter goes down first, the peanut butter with no, they both have peanut butter in it, if you've noticed. But the peanut butter layer goes down first and then the chocolate layer goes on top. of it in this one. Of course, I'll go back and forth probably a time or two here. He's just eyeballing it, obviously. Be very careful. This is very, very hot. Now, he's gonna put that in the sink or put it down somewhere, and then you have to start stirring pretty quick here. And you're going to stir these until we can get them combined. Get everything combined. It's all combined. Chris is combined. He's going to go ahead and pour his in. I still have a little bit more stirring to do. He's pouring it right into the bottom of the pan there. And then when I'm done here, I'll pour this on top and spread it evenly across the peanut butter layer. Well, they're both peanut butter, but the peanut butter looking layer. I'm out of breath, sorry. This is not an easy little task here. <laughs> you can see why I said to have somebody available to help you. I think I've done this once by myself and swore I would never do it again by myself if I could help it. I'm gonna let you pour. Teamwork.
Now what I usually do is just very carefully kind of smush that over to the sides. And I'll tell you the truth, you guys, I put this in the refrigerator. I chill this before I go to cut it and I store it in the refrigerator. For some reason, I can't ever get this to harden up like my other fudge, no matter what I do. So I keep it in the refrigerator, which keeps it nice and firm. And it comes out lovely, you'll see later. And I'll show you how I cut this, okay? But there you go, double decker fudge that is tastes better than a Reese cup. Okay, there it goes. Okay, now I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator, let it cool, and I'll be back to cut it when it's re when it's cool and ready to cut. Okay, okay, you guys, here we go. Here's the fudge. It's all set up. It's been probably about two hours. My daughter called me, we were talking. I was actually editing the beginning part of this video. And so it's been probably a couple of hours. It is now, oh my goodness, yeah, it's 25 after four. It's been longer than that probably. So what I wanna do is I want to just unfurl the aluminum foil and I should be able to lift it, see that, right out of the pan. What I wanna do this time, I sometimes will cut this on top of the aluminum foil, but I don't want to do that because I remember last year how I was having to peel the aluminum foil off of the bottom of it. So what I wanna do is turn it right over onto one cookie sheet real quick. And I want to peel, see that? The aluminum foil off. And it should come off pretty easily because I buttered the pan, but it does tend to want to stick a little bit. It's coming off the butter this way, but look. Perfect. Now, I want to turn it back over because I want to cut it on the chocolate side. I want to turn it back over. Get rid of that. Now, what I want to do is I want to make myself a square. Usually I would just start cutting this in half and then half of that and then half of that and then half of that. But when I do that, it makes the squares are more long. So I really wanna do, I think I might even measure it, you guys. Okay, here we go with my paper doilies. And I just push them down into the tin. And I'm just gonna quick put these in around the edges. My other peanut butter fudge, I'm gonna go find the middle. And I'm gonna find the middle of that. The middle on this side. The middle of that. And go into the middle of every other one 
or everyone. And I don't, well, I could do it again, but that would make really small pieces. Let's see how big our pieces are when we go this way. I should have cut some off the ends. Oh well. I think I'm gonna leave them that size. I could cut them again, but I think I'm just gonna leave them that size. And we're gonna go with it this way. Which I think is fine. I'm so silly with math, you guys, I'm terrible. I could have cut off a little bit of one end, but that's okay. We're just gonna go with this, like this, and we're gonna fill up this tin. And I just put them in. I don't want to snug them too, too close, but yet, you know. Next layer. Good. I didn't cut it right, but what's new with me and my bad math skills? Actually, I think I'm going to keep that one. That's a terrible, terrible uh, shape. I think I can get one more up there, or one more little layer. There we go. Okay. And that, my friends, will do it. Even though Arlen is terrible with math and she cut it wonky, it's okay. It's not going to hurt the taste any, and it's just family. And they don't care. And there we go. And this is just gonna go right back in the refrigerator like this. I am uh, going to be taking the whole thing to, you know, wherever we go and not breaking it up into um, different tins this time. People can take from this what they want. This is so rich, this is plenty, and this will be plenty enough for all of us. Okie dokie. We're all finished. And again, I, I excel at my math skills, don't I? I should have cut one of the long ends off a little bit at about an inch off of there, and then I would have been fine. But it's okay. As I said, it's just family. They don't care. They only see this once a year. <laughs> they don't care what it looks like, just so it tastes good. So, but I do have a little piece here. You can see the two layers. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? And no, the la this was an end piece, but the layers are not going to be the same all the way around. And that's okay. But I'm going to give it a taste. Oh my goodness, I love this. I love anything peanut butter, and I especially love fudge. So, let's go. Mmm. You guys. You know, I say this when I do some of these old recipes of mine. You know, I take a bite of that and it just brings back all the memories. You know, all the good feels. And I'm sorry, we're not going to be able to feel some of those feels this year. You know, so, but this fudge recipe is foolproof. 
As I said, I do keep it in the refrigerator. Uh, I think it would be all right on the counter, but I don't want to chance it. It is kind of soft. Although this turned out to be really, really a good texture. It is soft, but it tastes delicious. But I do keep it in the refrigerator because I like it cold too. So there we go. But anyway, that's it for this one, you guys. <laughs> and uh, again, this one is not for the faint of heart. Have somebody there with you, you know, to help you stir that second bowl and get it all poured into the pan right. And then you're good to go after that. And I'm sure you'll be much better at cutting it than me. <laughs> so with all that said, let me just say thank you guys so much for stopping by here to see what I'm up to today. I hope all is well with everyone. And for those of you who are struggling or suffering with a catastrophic illness or chronic pain, I hope that you have someone there with you, taking care of you, helping you get through each day, making the very, very best out of each day. I hope there's nothing weighing on your minds or your hearts, pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or from where it should be. I love y'all to bits, to bits, to bits, hugs all around, and I keep you in my thoughts and my prayers every single day. And with all that said, I'll just say, until next time, y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye. I think I might have one more piece.